This is a simple case that I think is getting convoluted by all these promises to prove things that we never disputed. We don't dispute, we have never disputed that there were advertisements that ran with our disclaimer on them, that we participated in some, in, in some of the creative development of these ads, that, that, that there are, 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 and that worked with some folks from JPL, among others, to, to help make them happen. We knew that ads ran. We also so knew that we did not know who paid for them, or what the final invoice was, or how to report them. That this, the simplicity of this case is by quoting a statement that Mr. Hicks made in his deposition. And I quote, obviously somebody cannot report what they do not know. And that, by the way, is an accurate statement of the law. Would you agree you can't report what you don't know? That is correct. Uh, would you agree you can't report what you don't know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so did you ever request to anybody to try to stop the commercial? No. Why not? Um, first of all, again, we moved on to other things. Second of all, the TV commercials were running, and I had no idea what the what the rotation was um, and, and how how many TV commercials were out there. So I did, did not. Did you contact any television station? Why would I do that? To ask them who had placed this advertising? Um, <clears throat> No, I did not. Why not? It's, it was irrelevant. It was irrelevant. Correct. We didn't just, I mean, we're not disputing the TV commercials ran. I knew the TV commercials ran, but the point of, you know, how, how much of the TV was running, um, I did not have that, I did not have that uh, summer. I think we're disputing whether you filed a complete and accurate campaign finance report. Scott Schweitzer testified that you and he have been friends for, quote, years, worked on many campaigns together. Was he present when you filmed the TV commercial? Yes, he was there. When they started running, did you contact your friend Scott Schweitzer to ask him about it? I did not. He handled creative. So why didn't you contact him? I didn't contact him because he was irrelevant. And we were running television commercials, and you know, it, it would have been done uh, um, by our, you know, by JPL. You just said, your own words, we were running television commercials. Yes. Did you make a Facebook post about your TV commercial? Mm -hmm. In that Facebook post, did you uh, make some statement to the effect that if you haven't seen these yet, here's my latest TV commercial? Yeah, pretty common statement. So, but you made that statement on a Facebook post for commercials that you did not authorize running? Uh, again, let's clarify. I authorized the creative, which I had seen, and I signed off on it. I did not uh, approve the purchase, the buy, the television buy. But you made a Facebook post saying, in case you haven't seen it yet, here's my, like, something that affected the case you haven't seen it yet, here's my new TV commercial. Yeah, pretty common to try to get extra traction on a television commercial. So the point is, I'm opening myself up for danger by providing a, a data that may or may not be complete. And so, it, once again, as Mr. Bry has pointed out, inventing a number. When you made your April 15th filing to the Secretary of State, did you contact your friend, Scott Schweitzer, before you included his invoices to ask him if there were any adjustments to those invoices? I did not. So, how much money did you leave, still have in your campaign account at the end of the campaign? Uh, approximately $96,000 in, in change. So is $14,000 the only amount you ever authorized to be spent for your campaign? Yes. Okay. So why were you worried about a constant feedback loop on the status of your campaign financially if you had way more money than you were ever going to authorize spending? Well, the truth of the matter was is that that Caraway had uh, had indicated that there was a debt, and I wanted to get it cleaned up. What debt? I, again, he, did, he never gave a number um, or characterization of what it was exactly for. So I, I had no idea what it was, but my contact point was Anna Lippincott. She would be the one that I'd work with. 
try to resolve the, the issues. And that's and what I was trying to do. Mr. Fairway testified that there were discussions about needing to fundraise using the speaker scheme to pay off your debt. Were you involved in those conversations? Uh, I was in, in, in the conversations with uh, Stephen. Stephen mentioned that it was not uncommon for the um, for the uh, speaker's office to to do additional fundraising post post election. Why would you be engaged in any conversations about paying off your debt if you had ninety-six thousand dollars in the bank and only had fourteen thousand in expenses? Because Mr. Carroll was indicating that there was debt, and I wanted to make sure that we cleaned up everything so we could close the books and move on. And so, what became of those conversations? They ended. Why? Um, at some point, um, the householder team was uh, was arrested, and. Uh, the speaker's office was the office of the group that we were dealing with disappeared. Well, let's be clear on that, though. The primary ended in early May when the provisionals were done. When, when were people invited? July. Early July or late July? Uh, I believe the date on our, uh, we discussed is July the 22nd. But you got to remember, just because they were indicted on the 22nd doesn't mean that their books hadn't been seized before that. Well, when did you have to file your campaign finance report for the 2020 primary. I don't know. Sometime, I believe, in June. If I told you it was filed on June 5th, would you have any reason to dispute that? I have no reason to dispute that. So how far in advance of anybody being indicted is June 5th? Oh, it's quite a bit. But you have said you never authorized it. The dollar amount I did not authorize. What did so you authorize? Our so you never authorized any mail to actually be sent? I authorized the art for it to be sent. The dollar amount, I did not authorize it. I'll say that again. You were aware mail was money. Correct. You talked about it in a campaign form. I did. How did you think, who did you think was paying for it then? Well, we had uh, funds in our bank account. Um, we were also trying to raise more money, and so that's that's what we do. So hold on, you had funds in your bank account, but you never authorized it, so that would be... So who did you think was paying for it when it was being done? At the moment, I had no idea. Did you ask Stephen Carraway for a report of how much was being spent on him? I did not. Who did you think was paying Megan Fitzmark? Uh, JPL. Did you ask Megan Fitzmartin for an in-kind or other report to declare her? I did not, and that gets into the discussion that we had before. If I, if I went around and knocked on every door and got every dollar amount, it wouldn't have been accurate because I wouldn't have picked up on how much, you know, um, Caraway spent with, with my time versus Gene Schmidt's time versus somebody, you know, we already testified that he was responsible for all candidates below uh, I-70. So that would have been probably eight or nine different candidates. How would I know what percentage was dedicated to me and how much the percentage was for Gene Schmidt or anybody else? So again, it wouldn't have been relevant data for me to actually be able to sort through. Did you ask any of the people? I didn't. I did not ask any of the people. On Mr. Bry's Exhibit X that you provided, the media things on here, one of the things that's, I think, here and is in the uh, strategy and media invoices was the cost for producing the ads. Did you ever ask somebody for an invoice for the cost of producing the ads that you personally participated in creating? I did not. So, this April 15th filing, I received it because of an anonymous tip from the Secretary of State's office, not because of anything in these proceedings. Why was this not provided to me and to the commission in these proceedings when you made this filing? Well, we were working with the Secretary of State's office, perhaps in oversight, and we should have mailed it to everybody. Um, I did not know that I needed to provide that to you for approval. Even though there was an active election commission case going on? Again, I was focused on trying to get everything wrapped up so that we could move on from this campaign. Okay. And once uh, again, I did not realize that I needed to clear it by you. I didn't ask you to clear it. I just asked you to disclose it. It was disclosed because it became a public document. 
when the Secretary of State's office accepted it, it became a public document. It was there for anybody to see. So in your view, are there any other things that you filed that I would have theoretically received by doing public records requests to agencies where you filed them? I'm not aware of any, but I'm sure that you could search that out. So you're, I'd what, make a public records request to every agency in the state of Ohio to see if Alan Freeman filed any? I think it would be very similar to me going to every television station trying to find out how many bills are out there that I would be required to pay. So look back at my original affidavits. Okay. Which is Exhibit 2. Mm -hmm. you, keep, you keep saying, you know, go to every TV station. That's what you did. You know, that's what you did. No, I went to the FCC database okay. and downloaded the invoices. So I don't think, I, I just want to get your characterization. You guys think that maybe you should go to the station to find your specific invoices? Not every station for anything, but just find your specific invoices to ask them, did this happen? No, I did not. So there's, I think there were six invoices in here. It wasn't go to every station on everything. You never, so you never felt, did you ask Susan Jones or anybody since these were produced in my affidavit to go research them? I, I did not. I'm trying to get my head around this. It's your campaign with your name on it. Mm -hmm. You contracted with JPL to provide media services for you. Mm -hmm. How did you know what those services were going to be if you had no contract spelling it out? Well, I mean, at a certain point, we started to discuss moving into television. We were not we were going to do television commercials. And so that was, that was the next step of the campaign. So we were operating off of, essentially, our campaign, our campaign plan. And so those, those were the pieces to you know, a larger campaign plan. But as a candidate, you don't believe it's your job to find out who pays for commercials that you produce, that you pay for the production, correct? Mm -hmm. That somebody authorized them, that you would either have an invoice coming in to you, or you would have an in-time contribution coming into the campaign, correct? There's, at a certain point, the campaign is moving quickly, and a lot of things happen at the same time, and so sometimes details get overlooked. It's a state rep race. Mm -hmm. It's not a congressional race. It's not a statewide race. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge campaign. I mean, even, even though you have 96,000 plus left, it's not moving that quickly. Actually, but, actually you would, well. but you wouldn't know where the commercials were being paid, who was paying for them, with your picture in them. Something your campaign to do. As we're moving through the campaign, I got into the <clears throat> to the race on November the 25th. The actual primary date was early March, so we had a very compressed time frame. So we were trying to do a lot of things very quickly. And so when you're trying to move that fast with a lot of those details, it does. There are a lot of things that happen at the same time. But after, and after, after the campaign, you have plenty of time to gather the information about who paid for those campaign commercials. I, I, I had the ability to, to, okay, I had a lot of time to do that, but how would I have found that out but for making that connection to Anna Lippincott or somebody else that's inside JPL? I, I did not have access to those folks that could answer that question. So there's not, I mean, I don't know when, when we saw the, um, the invoice from Scott Schweitzer, it said paid by Constant Content, one, an organization I had no idea who they were until this began. Um, I had no contract with, so I had no relationship with, and quite frankly, they no longer exist. How much money did you authorize for the production of your media spots? Um, I would object. I think this goes beyond the scope of any of the questions that were asked. Oh, go ahead. Would have paid for the, uh, now, how much did you authorize for the production of your media sponsor? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe it's in there. I'm not asking you. I'm asking a question. You said you authorized expenses. How much money, ballpark, did you authorize for the production of your TV commercials and radio ads? None. So who do you think was paying for them then? Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't know. 
my assumption was my campaign would be paying for them. It was either going to come through the House Republican Caucus or it was going to be we were going to uh, get the bill later. So you, so, but your testimony is that you never, you said previously you approved all expenses. Then you just said you filmed commercials without having pre-approved the expense, but expected to be billed for them. Is that a correct which, representation? Which, if that bill had arrived, it would have gone to my treasurer. I would have approved it, and it would have been paid. I feel like this has been asked and answered. Thank you. I have a question about the ORP endorsement. Oh. No, I'm going to ask it anyway. I didn't get Were you endorsed it. by the ORP? Um, I did move to strike, Mr. Green, don't answer the question.